20. The Steelers, 9-0. and oh. You know, I'm kind of ashamed of myself for, like, being a little bit skeptical initially of their over-under of 9.5 wins at the beginning of the season. I did switch it. When we had the, uh, the last-minute switches, I was like, okay, I'm taking the Steelers over. I initially yeah. took the under. I'm going to make the excuse because I didn't want to have any bad karma saying, oh, I'm taking the over, and then all of a sudden we underperform, and I feel like it's my fault. did switch it. I took, but the, I took the over when we first did no switch, and I took the under on the Ravens. So, boom. Boom. Um, I want to ask you, as someone that isn't a Steelers fan, where would you put the Steelers in the power rankings? Because I, I've been looking at some power rankings now. I'm not really a huge fan of doing that, but they got the Steelers at like three or four as the only undefeated team in the NFL a lot of places. And I, I'm not a okay. little bit weird. I get, I get that. I get it. I get it too. I, but I would put y'all at two. I still think the Chiefs are the best team in the league. Yes, I, I can agree with you that the Chiefs are – Probably that one loss they were playing against. Guys. They were playing against the. Well, of course, actually, I put them at three. Number one is the Raiders. So yeah, <laughs> let's <nine>. go, <laughs> let's go. On a series, Raiders that, Chiefs podcast, are number one. Baby. Number two, I put the Steelers there because you are undefeated. Your defense is still elite, and I, I think people like are just not completely sold. I, I would. Like, I, this is not me saying this because I think y'all are really good and y'all would have been this good last year if you'd know you didn't have one quarterback getting brain damage and hitting on the head with a helmet and another one that could throw, throw the ball five yards. So, <laughs> but I, I think like people just look at that Cowboys game and be like, oh, well, this is like an undefeated team. Well, you got to remember that game. First of all, you're playing that game away in Dallas after a big win against the Ravens. It's a trap game. Like, it's just, it is. Like, I wouldn't be shocked. But then you go out there and beat a Bengals team by 26 points when the Bengals have shown they are a very competitive team at times and can cover their spread and beat teams of the like the Titans. So I, I just don't think, like, I mean, you really, like, showcase against some, like, Decent teams this year, too. I mean, Ravens playoff team, Titans playoff team, Browns a playoff caliber team, Eagles playoff caliber, Texans have Deshaun, Broncos have been competitive, and the Giants, believe it or not, playoff caliber. So, yeah, I, I put y'all at two. I wouldn't imagine saying the Giants at three and seven or play. I have, you have to, you have to. It's not, I don't make the rules, man. If the, if a division just wants to wake up one year and be like, Hey, and the, the, all the GMs and coaches get together and they're just like, let's lose as many games possible. So that's all anyone talks about, but like they still got to pick a winner at the end of the year. <laughs> so I, I agree a tiny amount with the sentiment towards the Steelers. Cause I think the whole thing with the Steelers right now, and it was a problem a couple of years ago was that what are they going to do when they play one of those top quarterbacks? Someone, and a top quarterback on a complete team. Because yeah. I think right now the, the Ravens have been struggling. So, yeah, Ky, not Kyler Murray. Uh, Lamar Jackson is looked at at least last year as, okay, he's an MVP, he's a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong. Like, He's one of the top quarterbacks we played, and it was a close game. And people still value that win against the Ravens. And same thing with, like, Deshaun Watson. Like, okay, Deshaun Watson's a good quarterback, but the Houston Texans have only beaten the Jaguars. Um, good so win. I can ag- – Good two wins. <laughs> yeah, good two wins right there. Um, <laughs> so I can agree with the whole thing. I'm going to be – you know, I, it's going to be interesting what's going to happen when we have to go up against a quarterback like – a Patrick Mahomes, because that's who you're probably going to have to go through if you're going to want to get out of the AFC into the Super Bowl. Well, it's but looking like. Same... Well, it's looking like you wouldn't have to face that task until the AFC Championship, regarding either Big Ben or someone else very important goes down. You know, like unless like you totally collapse here, you're already in the playoffs, so it doesn't really matter. But. I mean, you beat the Titans, you can beat the Colts, and that doesn't 
you beat the Ravens. You got to play the Ravens again on, in a week almost. Yeah, those were. That'd I'm not gonna say. Game. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, like, we can beat the Ravens, and the Ravens can beat us as well. Um, and the Ravens, I will say, have been having to deal with a lot of major injuries to really talented players that we have had the luxury of almost avoiding, aside from Devin Bush, where we have Robert Spillane, we just traded for Avery Williamson, we have Vince Williams. Like, we have the depth to make up at least enough of the difference for it to not make a huge impact on our defense. And then obviously... Listen. Do people have the Steelers pick this year as a dark horse Super Bowl team? And the way your defense performed last year and getting a guy like Big Ben back is it's not like it's not like the uh I'm trying to, it's not like the Bengals are going out here and starting nine and oh with rookie Joe Burrow, you know. Like I'm not saying this is shocking now. I didn't see you going nine and oh. But to be to be this good and be a top three team in the AFC and now number one in the AFC, I'm not shocked by that. Yeah, I'm not shocked either. The thing is, is that going into the playoffs, I do believe the Steelers should be number one in the power rankings. Um, Mainly because if we get the one seed in the playoffs and we have that pass rush healthy, because now we got Tyson Alalu back, that nose tackle has been playing phenomenally. You know, we have Cam Hayward, Tewitt, Bud Dupree, and TJ Watt all healthy, all playing well. If we have that in the playoffs up against the Chiefs team, I think that we would have we have a good shot of winning. Not that it's guaranteed or anything, but shot. at home really... with that nasty pass rush, I think that that's a good formula for the Steelers to win against the Chiefs. If we lose that, yeah. then it's a different story. But I think that with Ben Roethlisberger at the helm, with the receiving weapons, especially now, it looks like Claypool and Deontay are starting to come into their own a little bit. Um, I think that there is enough here for this Steelers team to take down the Chiefs, especially if it's a home game. So I, I do yeah, believe no, the Steelers just, should be number yeah. one in the power rankings, but I can I can see why people have the Chiefs over them. I These NFC teams, they're good. They can obviously beat the Steelers any given week, but I, I'm not sure you can have any NFC team right now over the 9-0 and Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that... Too many of these NFC teams have shown flaws where the Steelers, not that they're a flawless team. This team obviously has issues. Every team does. But I think that this Steelers team right now has shown way less issues than every other NFC team. The only no, team yeah, I'm picking yeah, beating the Steelers point. is the Raiders. That's really it. Yeah, Raiders easy. I mean, that's an L. So... I mean, an NFC, like, matchup, you know, like, Drew, if Drew Brees is healthy and playing with the Saints, I think that the, the Saints could give you some problems. Okay, well, they'll be uh, in any game with Drew Brees healthy and Sean Payton coaching. Yeah, but, like, you were just saying, like, you don't think there's an NFC team that pairs with y'all. Like, you, no, no, you no. could be. I, I think they can beat us. I don't think that there's really any reason you should have right now oh, but, an NFC team over the Steelers in the power rankings. No, yeah, no, I don't have, I don't have, uh, yeah. You know, the two. only, and I agree with you. The only one you can really make an argument for, I believe, is the Saints. I, I can yeah. kind of see the Packers, but I think the Packers showed too many flaws this season a little bit. Dude, when, when the Packers lose, they, they're that. Their losses are so ugly that it just, like, you lose faith in them. You well, know? you also so, think like, about it. Like, they'll have some really at, good wins. Yeah, they have like, good wins. And the Packers, like, dude, you got Aaron Rodgers. You're gonna, but, look, you had that really bad loss to the Bucks, a team with a nasty front seven. You're going to tell me that if the Steelers play the Packers that we shouldn't be favored? We have a sick front seven. Our, like, that's what I won the 49ers. They, the 49ers blew out the Packers twice because of their nasty pass rush. They, they would rush four or five and get home. They didn't need insane coverage on the back end. I think that if right now the Steelers played the Packers, I mean, I'm taking the Steelers. It would probably be a three or four point spread, and I'd hammer the Steelers because I think a similar thing would happen. I think our pass rush would be able to get home. in the If we just rush five every play, one-on-one -on -one rushing, you know, our sick pass rushers against their blockers, against their offensive line, 
that we would just win consistently enough to comfortably win that football game. Mm-hmm. 